Hickok 45 here. The last single shot I'd ever let go. I wonder which one it is. Could it be this one? I don't know. Let's shoot something with it and see. <laughs> Let's shoot again. So, yep, single shot. And uh, that's what we're about today. Yes, 4570. So I've got a few on the table. In fact, all the single shots I own in terms of cartridge rifles, okay? I think I have some muzzle loaders that might be considered single shots, you think? But we're talking cartridge guns. What in the heck would anybody be doing with six single shots? You might not have any. You might never have had any. You might not even want any, right? <laughs> but uh, some of us like them. They're pretty cool. And so it is a category of firearms I have owned and I, I guess you'd say collected over the years and, and have enjoyed, as you know, because all of you have seen the videos on each one of these firearms, I hope. Maybe I'll uh, be industrious and link to each one of them in the description, so check that out. Uh, remind me if I forget. But uh, yeah, single shot rifles, cartridge guns, and uh, all these but one are for in 4570. That must mean I like the 457 cartridge, uh, 4570 cartridge as well, right? So we'll go through, this won't take quite as long. Some firearms uh, categories, I have quite a few. And you know, six is not a big number for me, is it? Some ways. Uh, yeah, so quickly, like I normally do in these, these uh, endeavors, is what I've got. This is the 18, an 1884 uh, Springfield trap door. Yeah, trap door. You've seen those before, I hope. They're really cool. First ones were in 1873. But uh, this one's an 1884, a little bit later model. It's been it's refinished. It's not as highly collectible, okay? It's the first one I got, and uh, pretty cool. Pretty cool. Shoots great. No rear sight on it. And uh, this is the Shiloh Sharps. It's a modern, modern gun. Uh, remake of the 1874 uh, Sharps rifle. And this is a Montana Rough Rider configuration, okay? You know I like that one. This is a high wall. Yeah, designed by John Browning. Pretty cool. It's 4570 as well. It's a U Birdie, you know, reproduction. Very nice firearm. And uh, this is uh, an 18, let's see, this is a model 18, uh, yeah, eight, well, yeah, model 1873 carbine Springfield trapdoor. All right, it was made in 1879. Whoa, an old gun. Yeah, real carbine. Pretty cool. Carried by somebody on a horse back then, I would imagine, wouldn't you? And then we have a modern, you know, I haven't had this all that long, the Ruger number no. one in 338 wind mag. And you know, I like it. I've had it out on Sunday morning, a time or two, and we've done a video or two with it, and we'll probably do a few hundred more videos with it because I like it. And then the old Remington rolling block. This is an old one. Yeah, nothing special or glamorous about it. Uh, it was made in the 1880s. Can't really date it uh, specifically to a, like a, a specific date, but uh, the expert and owner and seller of these sorts of firearms I've talked to at the Civil War uh, show in Franklin where I got it, it he dates it you know, in, in the 1880s, probably early to mid 1880s, just based on uh, the way it's made, some things like that. So, we got some old, we got some newer, but these are my single shots, and I have to make decisions, don't I? I really do. And you know what I was going to do? Uh, I fired this one. I was just going to fire each one of them. Let's do that, since there's only six of them. And, you know, I need something to do, don't I? I need to be cleaning guns this evening. So let's fire this old sharps. Ah, let's put a hole in that target with it. Yeah, right a bullseye to show you what kind of accuracy it has. So, yeah, got to fire them off, get them all dirty, and uh, go from there. Uh, maybe I could do it, too, as uh, I'm kind of talking about them. Let's fire this one again. Now, this one, as I said, it's a modern, uh, well, it's a reproduction. It's not reproduction, but it's been refinished, okay? And it's missing a rear sight. Uh, while I shoot it pretty well, uh, probably would not be my first choice. So I'm probably going to eliminate it, but let's shoot it anyway. You want to? Yeah, hit the gong with it. 
Maybe it should be my first choice. So that one I'm going to eliminate uh, as a finalist. All right. Now I fired the, the sharp. You know I love that gun. So that's not going to be eliminated yet. Let's put it over here. That might be a finalist. I like that. This is a high wall. U birdie high wall. Pretty neat. I like it. Uh, you know, it's, it's, I don't shoot it much, but I do like it. And there we go. Let's just take a, a round and put one over there. So, well, I don't know where to hold. I haven't shot this thing in so long. All right. Gong worthy. That's the main thing, isn't it? But, you know, I, I like it, but I don't think it's a finalist. Uh, nothing wrong with it. Uh, it is a Uberti with that kind of reddish finish on it. Uh, but I don't know. There's nothing extra special about it. When I'm talking about having to eliminate something. Otherwise, obviously, I wouldn't have bought these. I remind you of that in all of these videos of the last uh, firearm in a category I would give up. Uh, if I didn't like it, I wouldn't have bought it. Okay. So, but I'm going to eliminate because I got to eliminate all but one. All right. So it would not be my final choice. I know that. I could always come back and grab it and put it in the, you know, make it a finalist, good enough if I wanted to. I could do anything I want to. Um, and uh, this one, oh boy, that's a nice one, isn't it? That is uh, <laughs> 1879. Yeah, just think of that. A trooper, yeah, probably carried that thing, uh, you know, in service. You know, 1879. And when he got uh, finished with his duties, you know, at the end of the day, he did not get in a car and drive home, did he? Whatever he was doing, not in 1879. So, here we go. Black powder cartridge. It's a, a sign that I just love you all. I'm going to fire this. Or a sign that I love to shoot guns. <laughs> Let's shoot a black powder round. What about the cowboy? Wouldn't that be appropriate, maybe? Wow! All right. Put a lot of lead on me. <laughs> oh, yes. Pretty cool. And you know what I'm going to do right away? Is put a little ballast all down that barrel. All right. So that doesn't get all hardened up. That is a really, really nice uh, firearm. Boy. You know, a lot of you already would say, well, now how could you even choose anything over this, you know? So we'll put it over here maybe as a finalist, okay? Possibly a finalist. I'm gonna put that down there because I don't want to mix up the black powder rounds with. All right, then we've got the old uh, 338 Ruger number one. What a beautiful firearm. Yep, this one goes into what, 1870s, I told you, or 1970s, so it's a modern gun. And I haven't had all that long. I was a long time getting one, but you know, I really like it. I really do. In fact, let's fire it. I think I got some ammo. Go fire it. I was I had some Winchester out here, but it was nickel plated and it just wouldn't it wouldn't fit. I can't believe it. That stuff is so expensive and it just wouldn't fit. This is some Remington. So let's shoot this thing. Alright. Uh what should we shoot? Uh how about another two liter? How about a green one? <laughs> a little bit of recoil forgot about that okay nice nice gun and then we have well the last one right yeah the old remington rolling block well that thing the simplicity of it uh just the functionality of it the old dirty dark stock but man just a, a neat old gun that thing might have taken buffalo back in the 1880s there were a few left i take a lot of game grizz or who knows what in the mountains or wherever so let's fire around a black powder through this like why not all right how about that two liter right now let's put one on the gong if we can <laughs> i don't remember where to hold uh with these but uh that was close enough wasn't it i'm gonna do the same thing firing black powder i don't want that stuff to set up I'm going to get around to cleaning here in a little bit after y'all leave. All right. So, the old rolling block, what do I do with it? Does it make the... <laughs> uh, well, it's pretty rough. Since I have to choose, 
uh, you know, eliminate five of these. I guess I'll eliminate that one. Uh, as I always remind you, I'm not giving up any of these anytime soon. Uh, so we got three here of these. Now here's the other thing. You all know this. Uh, there could be two scenarios here. If I were a, a firearms collector primarily, that's just what I did. Not Didn't really shoot much. And there are a lot of people like that. I see them at gun shows all the time. Uh, they're just collectors, you know, and they can tell you the value and the prices of all these guns, but you rarely ever go to a range and shoot. Never hand loaded around in their lives, you know, that kind of thing, which is fine. That's another aspect of the hobby. Now, if I were that guy, that gal, my choice would be different, wouldn't it? Probably. But need I remind you, I'm a shooter. <laughs> I shoot these things. I have thousands of rounds I've loaded, a 45-70, 44 mag, all that, you know, 45 cold and everything. So that colors my decision uh, and causes some of you to really disagree with me probably right now because I'm going to eliminate this fine old carbine because if I have one single shot and this is it, I would just wear it out. I would not be a very good curator, right? Because I want to take them out and fire them pretty often. And you know, you just wouldn't want to do that with this probably, all right? Maybe a replica or something, but this thing is just too cool, too neat. I want a firearm in any category that I can, Hence the reason I chose in every every if you think back to all these videos of the last whatever That was a strong criteria whether I talked about that as much as I am right now or not, right? So it's a reason some of you disagreed with me. So I'm gonna eliminate that uh, If if again, I were just a collector that would be my first choice all right so that brings me down to two and uh, the Helicopters are coming in uh, but hopefully it's not the ATF, any of those folks. So, oh boy, which one of these two? Because uh, these would be shooters, wouldn't it? I could just uh, go buy ammo, shoot them almost as much as I want to. I'm probably not going to, how could you wear these out or do damage to them uh, that would affect their value a great deal, you know, like you could an antique, you know, either one of those antiques. So... Well, let me shoot, take a shot with each one. I need another shot. I might need, uh, yeah, I need that. I need a shot. So let's go ahead and shoot this uh, number one again. Ruger number one. What a beauty. Fun to shoot. Easy to pack around. I could put a sling on it. And, uh, uh, you know, what should I shoot? How about another two liter right there? <laughs> All right, nice rifle. It would handle anything that I needed to take out, right? And of course, this thing, big old classic sharps. Let's put a 45 slug somewhere. About uh, about on a buffalo if I can hit it. Uh, uh, set trigger. All right, got him good buffalo gun I guess right all right so uh, those two what would you choose which one would you choose forgetting uh, the other thing too we want to forget about the cost of ammo where you know that that's not a factor as, even though I am basing some of this on practicality again the reason I'm choosing a modern more modern gun but but you know both these are expensive to shoot uh, 45 70 338 wind mag so which would you choose which would you advise me to choose well i don't think this is too hard because uh well i don't know you know one thing i need to test it on since we have it out here let me get another 338 round and i'm not 100 percent sure which one i'm going to choose but i think this is one of the more powerful ones maybe on the table and i brought out this coke bottle that I've been meaning to bring out and shoot. Let's shoot it with this. This might help me decide. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Took care of that, didn't it? So that's gotta be my choice, right? 
Uh, so 338 is nice and powerful. We all, most of us, like powerful rounds. Um, yeah, just in beautiful wood, beautiful wood. So, so my choice just has to be the Montana Rough Rider. <laughs> yeah, really. Uh, this this combines both a classic design, just beautiful rifle, classic design. You know, the sharps. It's pretty much an exact replica. You know, in most every way of the 1874 Sharp. There were a lot of different configurations of them, but uh, in terms of stock and you know all that, barrel length, thickness and everything, but the 1874 Sharps is such a classic, a great rifle, and it's chambered 4570, one of my very, very favorite chamberings. And it's a modern one though, you know, made by Shiloh Sharps. So I don't, if it were an antique, really an antique like an original sharp should be more in the category of the trapdoor springfield for me wouldn't it and uh you know i probably would not choose it because i this firearm i do believe tell me if i'm wrong i could bring it out every day and shoot it a few times for the next 20 years i don't think i've heard it i don't think i'd wear it out right and it shoots a big old 45 70. So this is my choice and I'm sticking to it and I'm going to take another shot since this is my choice, right? This is the winner. This is the winner. Uh, nothing like a Sharps rifle that, man, you can shoot big, heavy bullets, 500 grain, 400 grain, whatever you want, all day long. And if you have an aversion to bowling alleys, you can bring those bowling pins right here on the range you shoot them all you want like that I have another one in my pocket I'll take another shot since it since it is the winner let's put it on a gong right. good old Shiloh sharp sharps 1884 uh, I enjoy single shots many of you do too some of you have muzzle loaders. You, if you don't even have cartridge single shots from your muzzle loaders and those sorts of firearms, you get a feel for what I'm talking about probably. And uh, you can identify it with these, these things. So uh, this, this is just a really nice rifle. You can shoot it all I want, like I say. Uh, not as collectible, maybe. Although well, they're pretty expensive, but not as real, uh, truly collectible, historical, as that, uh, that Springfield over there. But that's okay. This is a shooter, and I confess that's sort of what I am. So, there you go. Which one would you have chosen? And uh, let me know. So I can feel really bad if you don't like this gun. Life is good. Oh, yeah, that's better. This is a great gun for defense. Oh, hey, didn't see you guys there. Uh, while I've got you here, I want to remind you of our friends over at Talon Grips and Ballastall. Talon Grips makes... Uh, grips can you believe it uh, for all different types of firearms you can get rough texture or more of a rubberized texture uh, just sticks right on there you know really affordable really cool option to in, improve the grip for your handguns um, or, or rifles uh, so please check them out at talongungrips.com you'll be glad you did and also ballastol uh, dad has been using ballastol for many years it's a cleaner and a lubricant and it's non-toxic uh, it works really great, and we're happy to have them on board since it's been a part of our shooting endeavor for a very long time. So go to ballastall.com, talongungrips.com, and also while you're out there, I'm juggling all these things here, also uh, while you're on the internet, please do check out our other social media like Hickok45 on Facebook. There's also Hickok45 on Twitter, the real Hickok45 on Instagram. There's a John underscore Hickok45 on Instagram where I do some things. There's Hickok45.com. Uh, you can find us also on GunStreamer. So check out all that stuff and then watch more videos.